I'm just thinking about that term safeguarding. I mean, is it worth saying a little bit about what we mean when we use that term, just in case there are people from other parts of the globe coming in and it's not what they might use? Or would that be okay? Mm. So do you want to kick off? I keep looking at you because you're at the top of my screen. You've got a bigger picture than me. <laughs> I guess um, child protection was perhaps a more commonly used term a few years back. Yeah. And child protection describes the procedures that, that maybe kick in when somebody really needs something to happen to keep them safe. Whereas safeguarding is a much broader term than that, really. Um, which includes thinking about the young person's well-being as much as their physical safety. Um, so it's kind of emotional well-being, emotional safety. It's just, yeah, a much broader term. Um, and I think it, it, it um, for me, it sort of increases much more of a scale. So everything from um, a sort of low-level concern that uh, that might be sort of recorded in chat, if you like, not for counsellors, but in a school might be part of a conversation between staff or, you know, in an agency. Um, it's very sort of conversational, right up the sort of uh, far end of action needing to be taken within certain procedures. And I guess a counsellor, we similarly work within a scale. I certainly know from my experience, there'll be things I hear where I kind of, I'm thinking, okay, this is one end of that safeguarding scale where I'm just going to log it, clock it, whatever, somehow keep it in mind. And then it progresses along that scale to right to the point of, right, something needs to happen right now. We've got to, you know, this child perhaps isn't safe to go home or, or that sort of really extend. And then there's everything in between. Um, so safeguarding is really in, outside of the counselling room involves an awful lot of people that then as counsellors we're making decisions along that uh, scale I guess of okay where do we take this and at what point what threshold do we do something with it so it's it's holding that sort of broad spectrum in mind almost um, when working with children and young people I don't know whether you'd add anything to that, Sue. Um, I think you've more or less covered it there. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I, I guess the whole area for me involves a, a, a balance, a balance of a number of factors, um, kind of holding the relationship with the client and trying to maintain that relationship and your mm. integrity within that relationship mm. and balancing that with whatever uh, expectations there might be on you wh whatever mm. it says in your yeah. contract about the situations in which you might need to pass information on um, yeah and thinking about what the law says about various different situations and you know working within the ethical framework and I think that's why in the workshop we're looking at safeguarding and ethics yes because you're needing to balance up those two um, yeah that there's, you know, the ethical duty to maintain the client's confidentiality wherever possible and think about the client's best interests. And mm -hmm. there's the expectations of whatever organisation you're working within that you disclose in certain situations. It's kind of, yeah, working to, to tread that delicate line, really. 